Tedeschi Wealth Management Advisor, Perspective Wealth Planning with this week's market breakdown video. We're going to take a look at the four major U.S. indexes. We'll take a look at the U.S. dollar as well as commodities. And we're going to take a look at breath as well. Now, last week, we talked about a little bit of weakness in the S&P 500, but we said it really didn't matter unless we actually made a lower low. And you can see here on the S&P 500, we clearly held that important support level, and we got nowhere near the previous low. The S&P 500 now continues to have higher lows and higher highs, continues to be in an uptrend. That's been the case the entire year. A couple of days of weakness has not turned the tide whatsoever. And again, we got a nice bounce right to new all-time highs. You can see multiple times this year we faced a couple of areas or a few days in a row of weakness, and every single one of them has led to the same thing, a move back to the upside. All right, until we make a lower low, the uptrend is still intact, and everything looks bullish on the major index. We come in and take a look at the NASDAQ, the same comments apply. In fact, with the NASDAQ, it didn't pull back to what would have been uh, an equivalent down here on the S&P 500. It stayed up here, so clearly uh, a higher low put in and also broke out to new all-time highs once again. We take a look in at the Dow Jones here. We have not made the new all-time high, but we're basically right there. And you can see we did not take out the previous low, and we still have a series of higher lows in play. And if we take out the all-time high, which we're uh, just a, a, a smidgen away from, then we would continue to have that trend of higher highs as well. When we look in at the Russell, the Russell, as we know, has been trapped inside this range all year. We've talked about this a lot. I think this is a very, very important market to watch because that gives you that risk-on environment when the mid and small caps are rocking and rolling. We did not break the important support level on the pullback, which is a good sign. I mean, this support zone here is still in play. It's still holding, and as long as that is holding, all we're doing is kind of working off, digesting that incredible run that we had at the end of last year. We're obviously looking for it to break through the top of this box before we can say that this area of the market is bullish. Right now, it is just range-bound. It's the only one of the three indexes that's like that, and we will continue to pay attention to it. Now, we take a look here at the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar finally took out the high from March, but it was not able to sustain above that zone. Now, when I talk about support and resistance, it's not one number, it is always a zone. And while we did make a higher high, right, we still are in the context of a messy market, meaning we still have lower highs going back um, since February of last year. We kind of have a flat bottom down in here. Support is really 89 to 90, and resistance, we broke above right here, but it really runs all the way up to just a little bit over 94. It's this whole zone in here. So the US dollar, again, very slow moving. It is starting to turn that, uh, that corner where it's potentially heading higher. We were able to, again, take out that March high for a brief second, and then we dropped right back below it. So I think in between that 93 and 94 and a half, that's going to be that area that we need to pay very, very close attention to. If we get over that 94 and a half, we probably run back up and test that other resistance zone back in at 94. Now, when we look at the rest of commodities here, we look in at gold. Gold is having trouble getting back up over that 1850 level. It's fought around that 1800 zone here over the last couple of sessions. This is still just a giant messy chart in the context of a longer solid looking chart, right? At some point, we will get a resolution to this chart as it sits right now. We don't. So we're going to continue to pay attention. But basically, this is a trading sideways to slightly downward market in the context of a uh, longer bull market. Silver still holding above that 22 zone, having trouble getting back up over uh, 24. Same comments apply. It looks stronger than gold because gold continued to make lower lows over the last year, i.e. a little bit of a pullback. Silver has really stayed sideways in a range. 
We're continuing to watch to see what goes on here. Platinum is still having trouble right around that $1,000 zone. We come and look at Palladium. Palladium had a really nice bounce, but look where it failed. It failed right at 2500 which was the floor for a while. It's now acting as the ceiling. This market does not look good at all in comparison to the way it did a few months ago. Copper is still holding up over that $4 zone. Again, kind of really no action, no movement here over the last couple of months. Um, we really want to see... the you know, the next direction this is going to go, but it ran quite a bit. So some sideways consolidation here would certainly be healthy for a, a, a little bit of time. We come in and look at crude. Crude dropped below that 65 to 67 zone that we talked about was important and then made a very nice sharp bounce. Now, what is it doing? It's looking like that um, palladium chart we just looked. Well, we're now testing that area from the underside. We need to get back up over about 68 and a half so that we can make another run back towards that 75. This would not be a good spot for crude to fail. Now, when we look at it, Breath, we talked about this in the last couple of videos. We paid attention to in the New York Stock Exchange, the percentage of stocks that were above their 200-day moving averages. And you could see, really, since May, that number had continued to drop off sharply back to where we were only at 60% of stocks above their 200-day moving average, which is not a really strong market underneath of the surface. Now, since that video got put out we saw a fantastic bounce right here from this zone and you can go all the way back to october of last year this is an important area on the chart and we bounced all the way back up now when we're looking at this what happens right here right now is really important because what we have at the moment is that breakdown and the bounce back testing the underside of that zone we still have continued to make more uh lows on the stocks on the 200 day moving average and we haven't pushed back up. So I'm really paying attention to what's going on right here. We had a phenomenal breadth expansion uh, during those couple of days after the sell off last week. Let's look at this in another way. We had three consecutive days where on the New York Stock Exchange we had up volume over 75%. All right, the S&P 500 after it's at its 52 week high with this in play, look at the numbers over the next year hardly any negative instances at all the only time was in 1980 all right what this is saying is markets at all time highs and we have a huge breadth expansion up there for three consecutive sessions that usually bodes very well here for the mid and long term for the market so we are continuing to look at the s p 500 making those new highs, putting in higher lows, putting in higher highs, the indexes look extremely strong. And even though we face a couple of days of weakness and it's happened a few times here this year, every single one of those opportunities has been bought up and we continue to push higher. Until that changes, we like the structure of this market. As always, I hope you guys found this video informative. If you have any questions and want to ask anything about the overall markets, feel free to reach me at mtedeski at perspectivewealthplaying.com or give me a call at 814-580-9881. I will see you guys next week. Take care.